Okay. Hi, Cosmic Intelligence Agency fans, Facebook fans, wherever you're coming from to watch this. I'm Agent 129 of the Cosmic Intelligence Agency. I'm Tara Green here to give you uh, the monthly, I do a monthly tarot astrology broadcast and I'm saying hi to my son Elijah who's tuning in tonight too. So it's December already. I don't know if we can all believe that. I think we're all in a bit of shock that the year is almost at an end and we're getting ready for 2020. So if you haven't watched this broadcast before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of read out and make some comments about what the planetary aspects are for December. And then I will pick one major arcana from the tarot, one of the major 22 cards for each of the astrology signs in turn from Aries to Pisces. Now I can't see who's saying hi on Facebook. I say hi to all of you. I don't get to see that till after. Um, but anyway, so Sagittarius into Capricorn here. Okay. So the big news today, of course, is that Jupiter, the planet of expansion and opportunity, has just left its home sign, Sagittarius, where it's been for the last year, and moved into earthy, practical Capricorn today until December the 19th of the 20th in 2020. Okay, so now it's Capricorn's big year. Okay, now each planet is considered to be ruling a sign where it's uh, in its strengths and its weaknesses uh, where it's not doing too well so jupiter is considered to be the exalted ruler of cancer and so when it's in capricorn the sign opposite uh, is considered to be not so good okay so even though jupiter is the biggest planet it will still bring benefits of course to all capricorns but also to all earth signs okay so it's not that it's that bad or that difficult it's just that jupiter expands so it's going to expand all that you know practical hard working mature karmic uh energy of capricorn and of course jupiter will meet up with saturn and pluto later this year um so i would say look at your astrology chart if you know your own birth chart look at where capricorn is whatever house that's in and whatever aspects jupiter will make to capricorn as it moves through capricorn this year but definitely it's the big year for all capricorns okay for sure now uh, there is now a stellium of planets in Capricorn. And what a stellium means is there's three or more planets. Some people say three, most people say four, uh, all in Capricorn. So we've got Jupiter right now. We have Ceres, the former uh, goddess asteroid, now the dwarf planet Ceres, and Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, women, harmony, the arts, and Saturn, of course, the ruling planet of Capricorn, and Pluto, okay, all in Capricorn. So it's a big Capricorn overload, and it's pretty intense and pretty heavy, especially as we know Saturn and Pluto are moving closer and closer together until they meet on January the 12th, 2020. So we will be feeling that kind of intensity build. And there's a number of ways to look at Saturn and Pluto. Um, it is not light because Saturn is the planet of lead, and Pluto is the planet that rules plutonium, actually, uh, radiation. So Pluto always destroys. And these two planets were opposite each other. Um, and from an astrological point of view, they created 9-11. Uh, so it is, you know, in some ways, I would see it as the nail in the coffin of the patriarchy. Okay, that's what Saturn has uh, come to represent. Now, Chiron, I'm going to just give you a little overview here. Chiron, the wounded healer, is also going to turn direct on the 12th in early, early Aries. Okay on a full moon in Gemini. So all you Geminis, uh, this month, I'm gonna go into that in a little bit. This is a, a big fulfillment month for you. Uh, the planet Mercury will leave Scorpio and enter Sagittarius on the 9th. And Venus also changes signs on December 19th, 20th, entering detached Aquarius. So December 11th and the 12th, there was a full moon at 19 plus degrees Gemini. And all you Geminis out there, you know who I mean. Um, will have a sense of really turning around that wound that's been maybe getting deeper uh, in Aries. And as it moves direct, we can move forward with our healing. That's all signs, not just uh, Geminis, of course. The, it is the month of the solstice. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, there's a big snowstorm outside here in Toronto. Lots of snow, it's quite beautiful. The solstice occurs December 21st. And of course, all of you down under uh, Cosmic Intelligence Agency, Yulia, the CEO, of, uh, CIA, of the CIA that begins summer for you down there. So 
we were also going to have a big solar eclipse on the full moon on December 25th. That's in Pacific Standard Time, but it's on December 26th in Eastern Standard and Greenwich Mean Time at four plus degrees Capricorn, exactly conjunct Jupiter. So that's a big expansion of that Capricorn energy. And remember that solar eclipses repeat at the same degrees every 18 uh, years. Now, so December the 2nd and the 3rd, that's today, Mercury will sextile Pluto and sextiles are really nice, easy aspects. So between those two planets, Mercury is still in Scorpio, uh, and Pluto rules Scorpio. So this is a very nice earthy X-ray vision. Use your X-ray vision uh, today and tomorrow energy. Now, Venus and Capricorn, sextiles Mars and Scorpio. That's really good for grounding soul energy or your deepest emotions. It can be very, very intense. You can have very intense conversations with people as well. Um, on the third, Venus and Capricorn, sextiles Mars and Scorpio. So that's, again, that's very, very good energy. Again, very soulful, very intense very romantic, you know, especially Capricorns and Scorpios. Okay, they're both feminine signs, earth and water. So on December the 8th, the sun will square Neptune in Pisces. That's very idealistic, very romantic, very creative, very spiritual. Um, so you might want to focus on what your higher goals are, plan some travels, retreats, uh, education, write a poem, okay? May pay attention to your dreams because the sun is in Sagittarius, of course. Uh, on, also on the 8th, Venus was sextile Neptune and Pisces. Now, Venus is um, considered to be the human, human love. Neptune is considered to be idealistic or soulmate love. So you may find your soulmate on that day, okay, and speak the truth, okay, as well. Um, Venus and Capricorn, sextile Neptune and Pisces. So that's also a grounding of your dreams. So Jupiter... Uh, is squaring Chiron in Aries. Again, that can be very vulnerable and wounded also on the 8th. And on the 9th, Mercury will enter Sagittarius. So communications will be very straightforward, straight from the horse's mouth, very direct. Okay, people will demand the truth and justice. So there could be a big uprising of people demanding honesty, okay, especially in terms of education. Um, world news, you'll see that as well. Um, December 11th, Venus conjunct Saturn and Capricorn. So that's a very, again, intense, heavy, but karmic. So you could meet a karmic uh, person you're meant to meet as this, you know, past life stuff. Um, good for climbing mountains, good for putting out long-term goals in terms of career, good for working with elders, good for loving your elders. Venus is love, whatever sign it's Saturn is elders. So especially your dad may want to reach out to your father, maybe a karmic ending with issues with your father uh, or bosses, Saturn and Capricorn, your boss. So women, you know, may decide to really step up in the corporate world on, on that day as well. So there could be really positive things about that. Uh, Mercury and Sagittarius is in conjunct Uranus and Taurus. That means it's, you know, the truth and uh, Taurus rules the throat might be different to really speak your truth on that day. Or you may say something totally out of context, which could get you in trouble. All right, the full moon uh, in Gemini, 19 Gemini, December the 11th and the 12th, highlights communications, duality, oppositions, okay? Again, Chiron goes direct in Aries on that day, so whatever healing we've been doing going on underground or in the back will then begin to move forward, and, and Chiron in Aries is like instant healing, you know, fire walking, you know, instant inspiration, boom, it all happens very quickly. Uh, so December 13th, Mars and Scorpio trines Neptune and Pisces. Again, a very romantic, beautiful, idealistic uh, energy. But, but because we're dealing with Mars and Scorpio, it's very sexual, um, but very spiritual as well. So that could be really beautiful energy. Venus conjuncts Pluto and Capricorn. Again, these are very intense aspects. Um, this month, you know, Venus um, conjuncting Pluto, it's kind of like reminds me of the myth of Pluto um, abducting or raping. Uh, for Stephanie into the underworld. So that can be also, be, I hope you hear me right here, a sense of going back into some underground or unconscious or some shadow aspects. Um, some people could get into big trouble that day for past uh, sexual abuse energy. I mean, that's going on any, any, any way in the world that could be something, somebody really big in power could really get nailed. Uh, besides Prince Andrew and, and all that. Now, December the 15th, Jupiter and Capricorn trines Uranus and Taurus. Uh, the money markets might be very crazy. 
uh, Jupiter and Capricorn, you know, really has to do with corporate structure. It's good for innovation, for thinking outside the box, for freedom. We're going to see more and more of these revolutionary energy that's already begun going on in the world. On December the 19th, Mars and Scorpio sextile, Saturn and Capricorn again. Sextiles are nice, easy aspects. So again, very intense, very focused, very mm, moving, deep emotions. You know, Saturn Capricorn is kind of a dry sign, you know, so kind of things are going to get more and more intense, more passionate, more passionate to build. Saturn and Capricorn is the builder. Mercury and Sagittarius, Spurs, Neptune and Pisces, again, truth telling about your dreams, speak your dreams, you know, again, write them out, dance them out, sing them out. On December 19th to the 20th, Venus will enter Aquarius. So our love nature, uh, our values, that's what Venus rules, will shift from earthy and body body into detached airy aquarius which is all about again major change information age uh social media uh women women kind of taking it to the higher levels a lot of organizing a lot of management we're all on the same level playing field with aquarius so it's very egalitarian on december 21st venus and aquarius sextiles chiron and aries again the wounds our wounded cells where we're the most vulnerable becomes our great strength actually at that point on December 21st, the 22nd, on the solstice, um, we celebrate the rebirth of the light. This is an ancient, ancient pagan festival. We participate with that. It's a good time to do ceremony to honor. This is one of the major uh, cross-border energies, directions, portals, gateways in the world. And Christmas, of course, was made to uh, fit into that very ancient uh, celebration that the light will return. You know, we feel that very much here in the Northern Hemisphere where the days are very short. So big celebration, winter solstice. On the 22nd, Venus and Scorpio squares Uranus and Taurus. Again, the squares are hard aspects. Again, uh, a bit of a push-pull there about, you know, they're both fixed. They're both stubborn. <laughs> so love versus freedom i would say in general now mars and scorpio also sextiles pluto and capricorn again mars and pluto is so very scorpionic december the 22nd a lot of major change again it has to do with secrets finances power sex somebody's going to go down for abusing that power for sure so december 23rd the sun squares chiron so again we're going to be feeling wounded it is a time especially here in the north where you want to rest it is the darkest time of the year. The sun appears to not move for three days. It's a good time to hibernate and be like a bear, okay? Because the sun will actually begin to start. We'll see it a little bit more slowly day by day. And then it's Christmas Eve, December 25th. The sun trines Uranus and Taurus. So this is expect unusual Christmas gifts, um, maybe high tech, maybe very modern, very untraditional, very rebellious energy, maybe feeling very restless. Um, and maybe liberate your holiday, give it a whole new meaning. I know it's kind of heavy for a lot of people, Christmas, very celebratory for others. So do it your way, you know. On the 25th and the 26th, though, there is a solar eclipse, um, an annular solar eclipse at four degrees Capricorn conjunct Jupiter. So that is a very, very positive, powerful, you know, Capricorn, very practical, the rock, resourceful um, energy. So everybody's going to feel extremely grounded. You know, it's a big spiritual awakening. Jupiter is the planet of the higher master teachers. Um, really, the big awakening is we came here as spiritual beings to be here in the body. And here we are and really take, um, you know, take note of what's really going on in the world. So December 27th and the 8th, the sun conjuncts Jupiter and Capricorn. That is one of the best days of the year. So all of you Capricorns, all of your early Earth signs, five degrees, uh, celebrate that. Look at where that degree is in your astrology chart to look at how can I really reap the benefits of that. Now, if you really want to reap uh, all of this Capricorn benefits, you've got to work hard. You're going to have to sweat everything, the small stuff, the big stuff, focus on your long-term goals. You will get rewarded, okay? Uh, but really, it's really about following your soul's path with Saturn and Pluto meeting uh, in uh, January the 12th on 2020. So, on the 28th and the 29th, Mercury will enter Capricorn. So then we get more of that Capricorn energy again, thinking very pragmatically, thinking about what needs to be done, you know, what needs to be taken care of. That's Capricorn. Okay. So on the 30th, Mercury trines Uranus and Taurus. We keep getting a lot of these same energies repeating with different planets. Um, so again, thinking outside the box, being innovative, you know. Um, the modern ruler of Capricorn, Uranus, uh, 
respects the old structure and then has to blow it up to innovate it. Okay, so we want to think about where we're going. Again, we're entering a new decade, 2020. Uh, I just did a little visualization, visualization at this women's um, workshop that I was at. There was over 50 women there. We visualized, I took them on a visualization for where they were going to be at the end of 2030 and to look back with that 2020 hindsight as to what they wanted to make sure they started now. All right, so now, December 31st, it's New Year's Eve. Under a sublime Pisces dreamy moon, conjunct Neptune, you won't need to really drink any of that champagne. Uh, you'll just be high on the dreamy prospects. So that's a really kind of nice way to end 2019. Okay, so now, um, we're moving from the time of the sun in Sagittarius. This is the number 14 tarot trump in this deck that I use. This is the Toth tarot. Uh, traditionally, it's called temperance. In this deck, it's called art, and you can see the symbol of Sagittarius on there. Okay, and we're going to move into the Capricorn energy, and Capricorn is, of course, the devil in the tarot. Okay, so better the devil you know than the devil you don't. All right, so now, uh, so how this works. I've got my special crystal here, and I clear the cards, and I'm going to focus in on each sign one by one, starting with Aries. So I will pick a card for Aries and going in turn. So please be patient. Uh, I will talk about what it means for you for this month, okay? All right, so Aries. All right, so Aries, you got the devil. Okay, so right away, we're dealing with that Capricorn energy. You know, the, the tarot cards are always totally in sync. So better the devil you know than the devil you don't. And the devil is a very misunderstood and very powerful card. Um, it has a lot of different meanings. The devil is always projection, and it has to do with fear and separation. That's why in the Bible, Satan, uh, Saturn, Satan were once the same word. That's why Capricorn is the devil, um, because it has to do with you know getting too overwhelmed with the material world. Selling your soul to the devil is selling your soul for fame, for money. Okay, and everybody kind of worships fame and fortune these days. Um, but you have to understand again that you're a spiritual being having this temporary earthly cloak you're wearing, okay? So don't get caught up too much in the material world. Um, you're way more than that, okay? Uh, Aries, for Capricorn energy, it is about having patience, something which you have very little of. So this will be a good, hard learning curve for you, uh, Aries, to learn to be patient, to just put plant one foot in front of the under one foot in front of the other. If you want to get to the top of the mountain, if you want to accomplish those goals, I would strongly recommend that you start really setting your 2020 goals now. And you need a business plan, and you may need a mentor. You may need an elder. That's Capricorn, okay? Um, it also has to do with projections. So projecting, discard the devil, um, what you expect other people to do, and the reality check, that's Capricorn, the reality between you know, is, am I just projecting this? Who are they really? And also taking back your own projections, okay? Um, what do I expect of other people and who are they, okay? And eventually you want to laugh at the devil because you know it's just an illusion in a way, okay? So Capricorn, okay? So issues with your father, respecting elders, all of that stuff is what you need to do. And respecting yourself. You're going to grow up a lot. Everybody's going to grow up a lot this year as we get into 2020. So what are your fears, Aries? I know you seem to be fearless. What are your fears? You want to look at those issues as well. Okay, so Aries, you got number 15, the devil. Okay, so I'll let you mull that one over for a second. All right, so Taurus. Okay, so Taurus people, uh, again, all of this Capricornian overload benefits you by a nice positive aspect called a trine 120 degrees away. And then, of course, that also, the eclipse benefits early, early Tauruses too. Okay, so Taurus, you've gotten the sign of the hermit here. Okay, so the hermit, number nine, is also associated with the sign of Virgo, another earth sign. So again, this is quite nicely balancing those elements. So you need to take time to be alone, Taurus, okay? I know um, around this time of year, we tend to get very busy because it is Christmas or we're preparing for the end of the year. But remember, you need to take time out to kind of refuel and refocus and really learn to listen 
to your own inner wisdom. That's the inner light here, or that usually it's the lamp that the uh, traditional hermit carries. In this deck, it's the inner light. So you already have all the answers, okay? You need to remember to spark your inner light, Taurus. Um, you need to remember to pay attention to what you eat. Usually Tauruses are very conscious of that. Because this is Virgo energy, it can affect your upper intestine, your digestive system. So do really pay attention. Your body never lies. Tauruses know this more than most any sign. Listen to your body. Rest if you need to. Remember, it is the end of the year. Okay, this is the number nine. It's about bringing things to completion. So anything that you haven't finished, make sure you get that done. This is not really time to be lazy. Okay, so Taurus, um, we all love you. I love you, Tauruses. Okay, so you've gotten the hermit. Okay, all right. So now Gemini. Now we know that there is going to be that big uh, full moon for you, Gemini. All right. And all this Capricorn energy is in conjunct to Gemini in general. That means it's 150 degrees away. So it may be difficult for you to see all of this serious responsibility that you need to take right now. Okay, so Geminis, you have the number 11 here in this deck. It's number 11 in some tarot decks. It's number eight, but you can see it's the symbol of strength. Okay, so that's a bit of a system interchange with different tarot systems but let's just take it as strength whatever number you want to may see it you may want to see it as okay so gemini this is about harnessing your passion higher harnessing your wild desires to kind of you know do whatever in the moment okay uh in the tarot card here the woman who represents the soul the anima she's usually holding the jaws of the lion open in this deck it's called lust or passion because in this deck um, they want you to own your passion okay but there's also that other meaning of controlling the passions or what they call the animal nature so you can't just instinctively do what you want now Capricorn will give you some hard lessons about that if you don't because Capricorn is never easy and never light it's hard and there are times when we need to go through difficult challenges okay but it can also be a very positive time for you uh, Gemini is this uh, passion do what you love to do do what makes you feel happy you know Leo uh, the strength card rules the heart really open your heart fully you know live in the moment more be like the child who loves life okay you are a strong leader with this so do um, feed your strengths Gemini you know okay all right so Gemini you get the strength card all right now cancer so again cancers all of that Capricorn energy is directly opposite your sign you may feel like you're kind of being pulled in two different directions at once it's definitely that opposition of family and being out in the world or family and career very kind of strong issue that a lot of uh, people especially women have to deal with okay so cancer all right so cancer you get the number 13 here which is the card of death now uh please don't get scared uh you know saturn is traditionally traditionally called father time and was traditionally the grim reaper which is an old-fashioned name for the death card now do not freak out here death is always positive it is always a sign of rebirth change transformation in every moment your cells are dying so that new ones can be reborn in any change in your life you get married for example you're considered to be your, your old single self dies you you have a new identity if you give birth to a child you're also never the same anymore you uh, reincarnated as a new entity so this is a time of major change for you cancer so jupiter and ceres and saturn and pluto and venus right now in capricorn really are asking you to weigh out what is important to you and what is not because maybe you need to let go of situations that are just not feeding you not bringing you life anymore okay now my advice is always to pay attention to your body especially cancer to your stomach because it will always tell you you know what you need to know you know so you know you have to listen to your feelings cancers have trouble um asking for help asking for what they need so really please open up you know in a time of need and a time of change just ask for the help you need 
it is a good time to let go. I mean, Saturn, karmic endings, Pluto also, major karmic endings. Be brave, be strong. Use death as an ally. It's good to change, okay? So I ask you to dive deep into your emotions. This is Scorpio energy. Really listen to your soul speaking to you. Make time for that, Cancers, and let go of what is no longer feeding your soul. So that was Cancer, the death card, number 13. All right, so Leos. You're also in that in conjunct energy to all the Capricorn planets. That means that they are 150 degrees away, and you Leos can literally not see them. Uh, they're not able to see each other. So, you know, what you don't see can blind you. Okay, so the, my advice here, Leo, you get the card of Aries here, number four which is the king or the emperor. Now, 2020 will reduce to the number four. So this card here, the emperor or the king, is going to be the overall energy symbol of 2020. So this is all about working with the four elements. The four elements are really, really basic. Earth, fire, water, air. This is what our bodies are made up of. Earth, air, fire, water. Um, and so you have to work with the four elements to be balanced. Now, this is about holding your power or obtaining new power or really asserting yourself in a new way. It's Aries, Leo. So maybe this is a time when you really take stock and you reassess where you're going because, again, Capricorn is about long-term plans. It is the sign of elders and maturity. So however old you are, you maybe really want to fast forward. Again, since it's the start of a new decade, where are you going to be 10 years from now? Okay. You may be challenged to deal with bosses, to authorities, to stand up for your own power. You know, Leos are good at that. Um, but it's also about new beginnings. So I would really look at, you know, what do I need to change in my life? Um, what new initiatives do I need to take? You know, what can I do to really amp up my power in terms of everything, my eating, my daily routine? You know, what is it that I need? Maybe it's my home, my foundation, your throne. That can be very literal, your office even. So really, it could be a good time to renovate, okay? So Leos, exert your most positive power, okay? Be a true leader. Leos rule the heart, okay? So Leo, you get the king or the emperor, and you know you are associated with royalty anyway. Okay, so Virgos. Okay, so Virgos, of course, is an earth sign. All that Capricorn energy is very beneficial for you, and as Virgos are very humble, you know, maybe it's a time to kind of step up the corporate ladder here. Okay, now, I my intuition told me to include this. Yeah, what is that card all about? To include this very special card in the tarot reading today. Now, there were 22 major arcana. This is what's called the invisible uh, arcana on the tree of life, which is what the, the tarot is really based on. This is called the invisible sephiro, and it's called da'at. Okay, in Hebrew. So it represents a number of different things. I like to refer to it as the calling card from your guardian angel. So Virgos, for you, uh, this is a time to really connect with your higher self, your holy guardian angel. This is the whole purpose of the tarot is to help you to do that, to help you to understand that you have a higher self that's always there with you. So using this knowledge, you need to meditate, you need to stay grounded, you need to learn to listen to your body again, you need to focus on what do I need to step up to? What, what is the long-term plan here? What is my goals? How am I gonna get there? Develop a business plan. Again, speak to a mentor, speak to your higher self, um, implement, you know, you're very disciplined anyway. Uh, Capricorn is about worldly career and fame. So this is where you wanna look at what do I want to focus in the world? You know, all of this service, where do I want it to bring me? And how can I help others, you know, more in a long-term basis? So this is a very beautiful, very positive card. Again, this is very special. I don't usually use this card in the deck. So Virgos, so you get this special you know, guardian angel speaking to you. Now be aware of the synchronicities. Your guardian angel can speak to you in any form, in any shape, it can come to you in any way, in a dream or in reality. So pay attention. You have to be aware your guardian angel may appear as a homeless person or as it can be, it can seem very inconsequential. So be aware at all times. Okay. You want to act from your best possible self. Okay. Let's put it that way and be your best possible self. Okay. So Virgos, you get this special guardian angel card. Okay. So Libra. 
So uh, all the cardinal signs, of course, are getting the 90 degree aspect to the square from all of this Capricorn overload here. So Libras, let's see what you've got. Okay, so Libra, now you have the card here of the hangman. Okay, so this is the number 12, the hangman. If you're not familiar with the tarot, trumps. Oh, I said that word, okay. Traditionally, these were called trumps. Um, Okay, most people think, oh, we want to turn the card like that. But this is really the way it's supposed to be. I know things seem pretty topsy-turvy these days with President Trump there. But anyway, um, the hangman. This is a very kind of a different symbol in the tarot because it's based on the Nordic myth, myths. I can't talk tonight. This is actually the god Odin who voluntarily tied himself to the world tree to get new knowledge. And so really what it depicts is inverting your head, turning things upside down, like living in the upside down world in a good way, so that you can see things from a totally different or new perspective. So that might be what all of this Capricorn energy is bringing to you. It's also about not being a martyr. You know, Libras tend to um, always cater to what other people think. And maybe this is the time you go, well, what about me? What do I want? You know, that is the balance that Libra really needs to find, okay? So be careful not to be the scapegoat as well. There's an element of this. And of course, Capricorn is very much, is the goat. It's the goat fish traditionally. The scapegoat was actually a little goat that was actually at the beginning of the year, which is spring in the ancient calendar, not, uh, not December 31st, but they would put all of their past year's sins and blame on a little goat and send it out of town. Very simple. So that was it. That was the scapegoat. So Libras, don't be the scapegoat right now. Um, but I would say, you know, whatever it is your long-term goals are, in terms of your career, in terms of what you want to build in your life, look at this from a different perspective right now and really reassess things, okay? Um, Sometimes it's very freeing to see things from another perspective, and it's also about getting your knowledge from the earth, from things that are real, um, from very practical things. It's a very Capricorn mes message, of course. So maybe when you wanna, you know, you wanna get married, uh, it's a, you know, Libras need to be in solid, serious relationships. This would be the time to say, put a ring on it. I gotta get married. I'm ready to make that commitment. That's very all of this Capricorn energy is about the commitment. So make sure you make that commitment. Okay, or if you have lots of Libra planets, make that commitment. Okay, so Libra is the hangman. And don't get hung up. Okay, if it's not, if it's looking a little hard these days, don't get hung up. All right, so Scorpio. Scorpio. Okay, so again, all that earthy Capricorn energy is in harmony with you. You get the card number 21 of the world or the universe here. All right, so this is where for Scorpios you go. All right, universe, I think I've learned all of those lessons I've needed to learn. And now I'm going, okay, got there, been there, done that. I'm ready to step into a whole new world. So this is really good. This is the liberating thing. Now Saturn is really endings, karmic endings. And so you want to, you know, if you are 28, 29, uh, you're having your first or your second Saturn return. This is a very intense Saturn return for you. Okay, and you can see on the card, the world is Saturn. Okay, this is where, you know, the whole scheme of the tarot is from moving from zero to the fool to 21, the world. So this is after you go through your whole path of enlightenment. This is when you have to come back down off the mountain and chop wood and, you know, fetch water and pay your taxes and do your dirty laundry and all that normal everyday reality stuff. So for you, Scorpio, this is about making it real. This is about walking your talk, okay? This is about creating long-lasting, solid products, what it finances, whatever it is, building, 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 getting out into the world, okay? You can't hide anymore. So this is a good thing. So it's maturing. Um, make sure you've learned all those lessons before you move on uh, in 2020. And think about, you know, what does it look like uh, for you to be at the top of your game in the world. That's also really important. Ambition, you know, that's Capricorn. Okay, so Scorpio, you get the universe, the world, finished all those old lessons, getting ready to go into the new. Okay, so Sagittarius. Okay, I know it's, I'm just double Sag. I know it's been uh, our best year in 12, but, you know, I consider that, it's, that all of that luck, Jupiter's always with all of the Sagittarians, so we're just going into 
Capricorn issues. We're going to make all that inspiration real this year. Okay. So for Sagittarius, you have the number, what do we got here? Number seven, the chariot. Okay, so you are still in the driver's seat. You know, this is like the sign of cancer. So for Sagittarius, you need to nurture uh, your dreams. This is the wheel of life, the wheel of karma. You got it there in your lap, okay? Also, this is a very beautiful protective card. And these major tarot cards, what I love about this deck, this is my major go-to deck, is that you can imagine that you are these symbols, these energies, these people in the card. So it's a knight wearing golden armor. And so I would advise you Sagittarians to put on your golden armor every day through a visualization before you go out, before you're gonna do anything. It's very empowering energy, but anybody you know, can do this as well. So you wanna feel like you're in the driver's seat and you have to watch cycles because the number seven has to do with the law of cycles. So of course, there's seven days of the week named after the traditional seven planets, and you have seven chakras. If you do yoga, you know that. So you know, there's always this up and down, ebb and flow, it's very Cancerian. You know, are you the wave or the particle? You have to know that when the wave dips down, you've got to go down with that energy and wait for the upswing again, okay? So just listen to the rhythms in your body. That's very important. For Sagittarius, this is about getting into your body. This is about all of your great aspirations. They have to get real, okay? It's also a family. So this card, Cancer, it could be very fertile. Wherever J Jupiter is, whatever sign, it's very fertile. Um, it also has to do with your home. So you could move this year. There could be a sense of moving or renovating or nurturing other people, women, children. So very much this is something to pay attention to. Jupiter, you're the teacher. You want to implement something new in terms of instruction or something you're writing or a new philosophy or even going back to school again, uh, getting whatever tools you need to move forward. So Sagittarius, you have number seven, the chariot. Okay. So Capricorn, now it is your big time right now. And of course, all of 2020 is super Capricorn time. All right, so Capricorns. Okay, so you get number six, the lovers, Capricorn. Now, I know that Saturn is always a hard teacher, the Grim Reaper, he's pretty tough. Uh, he will test you and he will bring you limitations and obstacles, but that's how you learn and you grow. So it's really important Capricorns, especially those ones with your sun or any other planets at 22, 22, 24 degrees Capricorn, um, because that's where the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction will be to really be doing what you love to do. This is the lovers in the tarot, okay? Now, it is associated with the sign of Gemini, so it's about duality, it's about polarity, we actually need polarity, uh, that is the nature of our universe. Everything works on polarity, okay? So, but not polarizing, okay? So Capricorn, you don't want to be fighting in opposition. You want to be moving towards unity, okay? Because you can't have day without night, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so doing what you love to do. Um, this card also rules the lungs. Gemini rules the lungs. You got to remember to breathe. You're taking on a lot of new responsibilities. You got to remember you're building a brand new, 7, 14, 21, 28 year plan, okay, no matter what age you're at. So think about, you know, this might be a time when you make a real commitment, you know, to getting married or you don't have to legally be married, some kind of major commitment in your work or to an other or to a working in a partnership, you know, it has many different ramifications and it's really all about having the balance of the masculine and the feminine. Capricorn is a feminine earth sign. I think we forget that, even though we associate it with, you know, big business. So this is about bringing balance into the world. So Capricorns, all the power is in your court this year. You know, you're the ones who, who are gonna be taking responsibility to bring balance, equality into the workplace. That's something that, you know, women have been fighting for for a very long time uh, and women will, We'll also be fighting for that balance. Everybody will be fighting for that balance. We don't want to fight about it. We want to just do it through, um, through love, actually. So loving everything that seems to be the other than you, it's really just a part of you. Okay, so Capricorn, you get the lovers. So it's about communicating, talking, analyzing, you know, thinking, okay? 
uh, and being kind of childlike, being fun. You know, Capricorn's a heavy, mature sign. We have to remember to be light about things too. All right, so Capricorn, the lovers. Okay, so Aquarius. Aquarius, all right. Now you know that Saturn is traditionally the planet that rules Aquarius, okay? Now, at the end of 2020, Jupiter and Saturn will meet at zero degrees of Aquarius. So for all of you Aquarians, you know, right at about a year from now, uh, it'll be your big year in the next kind of governing the next 20 year cycle. So Saturn, um, you know, in solar signs, then all this Capricorn energy is happening in your solar 12th house. Now you do have the wheel of fortune here. So I would say use the wheel of fortune, the number 10, which is Jupiter as a kind of year to kind of expand, but to kind of learn the foundation of what you need because you have to understand the foundation, you have to understand the history before you can implement and change, okay? Um, a lot of younger astrologers are going back into traditional astrology, actually, so that movement, history, um, origin. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is very positive energy. It's about taking risks. Now, Aquarians are usually not afraid of taking risks. This could be an expansion of your message, of your idea, of whatever it is you've invented, of rebellion in the world in general, which is going on, which will continue to accelerate. So Jupiter is the higher master teachers, you know, take risks, move ahead, you know, spread your vision of unified field energy, you know, how we want to use technology to improve the earth, the whole earth. So I would say, Chris, this is a very good, very strong energy for you. You have to build it. You have to build that foundation really strong. So I would say start doing that now. It's almost like you need a two-year plan. So very good. Trust your luck. You know, you can buy some um, lottery tickets too if you want. Okay. You could be educating people as well and doing a lot of traveling this year. Okay. So Aquarius, you get that card. All right. Now we're back to at the end here. We're doing Pisces now. So Pisces. Okay. Neptune just turned direct not too long ago, right in the middle degrees of Pisces. So let's see, again, all that Capricorn energy is quite beneficial for you. Okay, so, all right, so Pisces, you get the card here of justice. Okay, this is the balance. This is obviously Libra energy. So again, whether you call it number eight or number 11, at this point doesn't matter, okay. So Pisces, you need to bring balance into your life. Now, Pisces are traditionally dreamers. They're creative. They're kind of in the realms of the imagination in the dream world. But so I think that all this Capricorn energy is benefiting you to make your dreams real, to make things rounded. Also, this is the sign of relationships, of marriage. Again, it's very karmic. You could be meeting someone that you're meant to meet in this life over this next time. Um, and strike up a really balanced relationship. So in everything in your life, you have to look at how out of balance am I? You know, and we, we are all out of balance. It takes work, it takes effort. You have to eat right, you have to sleep right, you have to think right, okay? So everything has to be balanced. So Libra, it takes you out of your emotional realm and puts you on a bit of a more detached realm. Again, it is a time to socialize. Uh, to feel at peace. You could be also a go-between, an ambassador, um, very much listening to other people. But I know you tend to get very much overwhelmed with other people's emotions. Again, balance. Balance is the key, the middle path. So this is a very nice, very positive energy, Libra. It's about beauty and harmony and the arts. Maybe you want to make things uh, for Christmas, give people gifts that come from your heart and from your spirit, make beautiful things. It's a good time to do that as well. And again, think about planning out what you want to happen in 2020. So Pisces, you get Libra here, justice. Maybe also being a strong advocate for whatever you feel is unjust in the world. So any charity you want to give your time to, of course, this is when people think about charity a bit more, giving your time to a food bank or giving away things that will help other people or just raising consciousness. All right, so Pisces, Libra energy, okay, balance. All right, so. Cosmic Intelligence Agency fans, uh, whoever has come here to watch this, I want to wish you a very, very happy um, everything for December, for the end of 2019. It's a good time to take stock of the last 10 years and, of course, 
where we're going to be in 2020. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm at terratero.com and you know, join the CIA. They have wonderful astrologers on here, and I want to wish you all the best. Solstice, Christmas, holiday, Hanukkah, whatever, cele whatever celebratory holidays you're going to have. Many blessings uh, for the year, and I will see you in 2020. Thank you.